Good morning, wieners. Welcome to Camp Claw. It is a beautiful, gloomy day up here in the Northeast. And today we're filming a little camp video. We've been up here for about three weeks now, a total of one month. And we've been doing a lot of filming, a lot of fishing, but what we haven't been doing is a whole lot of camp clawing. I haven't filmed around the camp in quite some time, and I think we're due for another update, seeing as we are currently under construction. And I've also decided to open up my own backyard dump. We've got everything from old mattresses, old rugs, chewed up mice infested furniture to, I mean, I don't know, just a lot of old camp claw memorabilia. Things are not looking good, but we are very nearly finished and completed with the rebuild of the old part of the cabin. Today is an exciting day because we are gonna go back to the Guggen Lagoon, which is the pond that lies nestled in my backwoods backyard. And I haven't been there in probably over a year. The trails back there are extremely overgrown, so I don't even know if we're gonna be able to get back there soundly. Usually I take one of my imported SUVs or my side-by-side, -side, but it is seriously too thick for even those to get back there. It's also extremely muddy, seeing as we got a ton of rain. But I'm excited to bring you guys back there. We're gonna see if anything is living in the Guggen Lagoon. My bet, is that there is a possible chance there could still be some small or trout back there, but only one way to find out, and that is to go back there ourselves. But just take a gander at this. This is awful. Mattresses, freaking old shelves. There was so much rat poop in some of this stuff that uh, it is honestly not salvageable. In case you're wondering, all of these scuff marks are from porcupines. They come out of that woodland over there, waddle on over, and just decide to eat my steps. Um, porcupines, if you're watching this, I have a quick question. You guys have a whole forest to eat wood from. Why is it that you come all the way over here, you waddle your spiny little ass all the way over here to gnaw on my deck, to gnaw on my steps? So we gotta get a composite step now. That has been going on for years, and it's to the point where I just can't even ignore it. It is so bad. Ah, before we head out to the Google Lagoon, I wanna give you guys a little sneak peek of the old part of the cabin, because I've been showing you guys a lot of the new part, but. The old part also got some floors and some new doors. As you can see, this door is falling apart. So we got a new door. The mud room is still a mud room. Ah, nothing quite like the smell of old camp claw. This is what old camp claw is looking like right now. I've, I've been in here cleaning up, getting everything mostly sanitized because we did have quite a few mice in here. It happens, especially with these older cabins. And uh, to be quite honest, when you build a house in the woods, the woods likes to come into the house. But it's, it's good. It's not like it was anything crazy bad. Oh, hi, Mila. You wanna, say, you wanna say hello to the people? What's up, Gooby? So we got her blocked off currently from the um, old part because the old part is still a little dirty, dude. We, we gotta clean it up. Say hi. Say what's up, wieners. So everything remains just about the same as far as where, uh, where I'm keeping everything. The couch is the same, TV's the same, editing workstation's the same, and uh, we also still have the bunk beds over here. Um, we did get a nice little shelf built, and I think I'm gonna put like old Camp Claw memorabilia on here, maybe like the, the camera that I dropped that went 30 feet into the water during a tournament that we somehow recovered. I uh, got the samurai sword from past videos. There's a lot of old camp cloth stuff that I might just hang up there as a memory to all the past good times and videos. But yeah, it's nothing extensive. Like it just, I, honestly, I threw away a lot, of, a lot of furniture. The furniture that I had in here was still from the previous owner from when I bought the place in like 2018. So if that gives you an idea of how old it was, I mean, that stuff was just Papa, falling apart and Papa, it wasn't, it was cheap. Papa. All right, Pops is gonna go in the woods. He's gonna see if there's any small ones left. Thanks for joining us. All right, I love you. Like I said earlier, I did have a mouse problem, and honestly, I, st <laughs> I still do. That's Milo screaming in the background, by the way. And I think I solved it this morning. Um, it was an issue because I was setting out some traps, and that trap right there kept going off. And I'm like, okay, it's weird that it's only that trap that's going off. There must be somewhere up here where these mice are, are scurrying through my walls or, I don't know, through my insulation or something like that. And I think I found the solution, so I absolutely spammed it with spray foam, a little bit too much spray foam, but I can trim it down. Um, but hopefully that solves the issue. You know, when you live out here in the woods, there's always gonna be some mice. I just don't want a lot of mice. Like they, can, they can come through every now and then, but not this consistent. Like every night I'm getting a mouse in this trap. So I don't know. They sure do like peanut butter though, I will say that. All right, so now that you guys have got a nice little camp claw update, let's head out of here. Go check out the pond and see if we got anything still surviving in the Guggen Lagoon. So in order to catch these smalls, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna play it safe. Let's see if we can get some live bait. As you guys know, or maybe you don't know, my pond is full of shiners. There's shiners, crayfish, leeches, 
course, frogs and maybe some other insects. So these smallmouth, in theory, over the years had lots of forage to thrive on. And in years past, I've set a, a minnow trap out there, caught some golden shiners, and we've just thrown them on a hook with a bobber, and bing, bong, boom, we've had ourselves a nice smallmouth. And honestly, something so pure and nice about you know, not using all that technical, artificial stuff and just kind of beating the bank with a nice little minnow on a bobber. So I'm gonna grab my trusty, dusty minnow traps here. I think we'll really, in theory, only need one. These are great. These are like the best ones they ever made. Freaking, I don't know, Ten dollars at Walmart. Although these days, with inflation and everything, I'm sure they're probably like three eighty nine. It's a shame. It's a shame. Our country's going down the gutter. Freaking minnow traps are thirty dollars. Gas prices are skyrocketing. This thing is lodged. I can't. Why can't I not? I think I'm making it worse. Honestly, why can't I not get it out? The first one came out really easily. All right, just kidding. Oh, thanks for watching today's video. We're not gonna be able to get the minnow trap out. Oh, you crack at that kill. Okay. Well, I'm just weak, apparently. I'm just weak, apparently. <laughs> Little zip tie action, bing, bong, boom. Ready to roll, gonna grab my rope. Only thing I need left is bait. And ask the dogs for that. Perfect. If you're ever trying to trap minnows, refer to a dog or cat food. I mean, maybe cat food works. I don't know. I prefer dog food, I'm a dog guy. So I just asked a million lucky if I could borrow their food and we got this thing zip tied, locked down. Nothing's gonna get in. Smells like minnow bait. Let's head down to the pond. Well, I haven't been back here in who knows how long, and you can tell because it hasn't been groomed, it's pretty overgrown. But what has been back here is some wildlife. It looks like, that looks like a paw, maybe a coyote or I don't know, that's pretty big. And then you've got hoof mark from a deer, and then maybe a smaller deer. But you can definitely tell this is still being used by animals. If you look ever so slightly right down there, it just barely parts. So while I've not been back here, Mother Nature has. You see any wild wieners out there, Lucky? Dude, she's such a gun-ho dog. She's got her to four high right now and she's just trucking through this mess. The Guggen Lagoon. How beautiful. I've missed this place. Looks like an old, that could be an old smallmouth bud. This pond has not been fished in years. So in theory, they should be hungry. I got my snacky swimmer. Google snack. If you guys want to pick some of these up, use the code John B. Save 10% off. I honestly love our panfish and, and crappie soft plastics. I actually find myself using them a ton up here because there's so many different species like trout and bluegill and crappie. And Lucky, are you eating the dog food through the trap? What a goob. What an absolute goob. So in years past, the smallmouth like to hang around right on this, right on this grass edge. Let's see if we can catch one. I think a popper probably would have been more sound. Oh, oh my gosh, right there. Did you see that? There's one right there. Giant smallmouth. Holy hell, dude. Is he on a bed? That was crazy. It's like he was here the whole time and I just, just now saw him. You guys probably couldn't have seen it, but that was like a three pound smallmouth just hanging right against the bank. So I'm with my own eyes. I didn't catch him, but confirmed there are fish still living in Guggen Lagoon. That's not good enough for me though. I'd like to actually catch one but it is good to see that life is still thriving in the pond. Wow, that is definitely an old bed, isn't it? Look at that. If you, I mean, I'm not for sure, but if you look at the surrounding bottom, it's all super dark and uh, there's a bit of an indent there. That's, that's a bed. So the smallest in here do reproduce or at least try to reproduce. So we may actually see some little tiny smallest today. Wow, you see uh, any of them eat? There's one. <laughs> Just had a small come up and crush my popper. <laughs> Gail was back here the other day and I was like, I just asked him, I was like, do you see any uh, small back here eat? And literally, as I said that, I got absolutely crushed by one. The crazy thing is I, I simply don't know how many are in here. Peric one time caught four, but that was in a span of like a couple of days. So I've got no idea. It'd be fun to take Milo back here when she's a little older. Show her the woods. Lucky, you ready? How far should I go out there, girl? There we go, that'll do. Perfect, landed right on the side. Cool. Now we wait. Ah, we're back at the place where I spent a lot of freaking money. Guess what? My machine is done. I don't know if you guys remember, but I, I, I'm i in a proud odor of, of a, a Maverick X3 side-by-side. 
she's got turbo, she's fast, and uh, I love to break her, but she's finally fixed. We're picking her up right now. This is a good little activity to do while we're waiting for the minnows to uh, hopefully get into our trap so we can use them for small baits. But yeah, it's been sitting for, uh, well, I don't know, the whole winter. I'm sure it was being used by squirrels and other nefarious little creatures, but she's done, she's ready. Let's go see how she looks. We got her back, dude. Oh, she looks freaking good. $4,000, got all new body panels, new radiator, new battery. Uh, if I broke down everything that was shattered on this vehicle, the video would be probably a 20 minute long uh, session of me just telling you. But she's back to life. Oh, there's kind of a right there. I guess we didn't get that replaced. Anyway, it's fine. These things are meant to break and I'm really good at it. But we got the freaking X3 Maverick Turbo R. She looks black and white. I love her. We now have a side by side back. I guarantee I'll be right back here getting this thing repaired in a, in a month or so. But nonetheless, let's uh, let's take her on home, hook up the boat and do a little bit of fishing. So, name's Chet. I'm a trail riding god. Uh, can am for life. Haha. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, not much. Just uh, just out here hitting the trails. Found all the cutties earlier. Got her a little muddy. Broke her in. Love the Maverick X3 Turbo. No, all jokes aside, I got my big piece of shit back. This thing is the never ending financial curse. I, uh, I literally just got this thing off the trailer, did a bit of riding off camera, and uh, it sounds like we've got a bit of hopping, which is coming, I think, from the, the ball joint or maybe the axle or something like that, or maybe my engine's about to explode. Maybe, maybe I've got a knocking in my, I don't know. Uh, and there's like a huge squeaking sound in, in the rear. Um, so in other words, what I'm trying to express to you is it has not been really fixed. It still has issues. And when we dropped this off, it didn't have any of those issues. So somehow, somehow, it has manifested itself to continue to piss me off. But on the bright side, it looks cool, right? And with these shades, I look like I actually know what I'm doing. All I need is a white monster and maybe a, some drywall to punch right through. Hey, she just lost traction. Oh, you hear that? Sounds like a ball joint to me. Hey. Oh, hey. Let's break it already. Who's with me? Sounds like shit. Hear that squeaking too? Oh, this looks like a job for... F Dude, I need brakes. Do you hear that? I need brakes too? Gosh, this is the gift that keeps on giving. Let's put her in a four high. We're going through some mud. Oh, oh, what was that? Oh, metal on metal, baby. Hit a couple trees. Stir up some mud right into the pond. Can you imagine if I just sent it right into the pond? Dude, if I did, I'd have been like, well, thanks for watching, guys. This has been one of the most exciting episodes I've ever filmed. I got absolutely scorched by the dealer. I don't even care, I don't even fight them anymore. I'm like, whatever, yeah, okay. $4,000 for what, like three decals and a new door? That sounds not right at all, but here's my credit card, sir. Just swipe it. Piece of shit. this thing is, if you guys wanna buy a lightly used 2019 Canon Maverick Pro XS, X3Z 4Y. Uh, it'll be on Marketplace in probably 24 hours or less. Uh, I might let a little minnow marinate in the pond while I cast a lure around. Maybe a Ned Rig or a, a popper of sorts. We got blown up earlier. We got boofed on, as the Australians like to call it. I got a nice boof on the surface earlier on the, on the popper, so I might try that again. But first things first, let's check our minnow trap. See if we got any minnows in the trap. Oh, just kidding. It's just a prank. All right, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. What do we have? Oh, Houston, we have got minnows. Look at that, cuz. Our minnow trap worked. It appears we have a plethora of what is main golden shine. I think, that, are those golden shiners? I believe they're golden shiners. That's a snook. Oh, that is a snook, you're right. Juvenile snook. FWC, if you're watching this video, I just caught an underslot. We got a couple little snook. Let's put them on the hook and uh, toss them out there. I'm gonna throw it in that general area as to where I got bit earlier. Got a nice storm front rolling into, so maybe that'll stir them up a little bit. Oh, one more time. Cool, all right, I'm gonna keep my minnows in the water and I'm gonna grab probably the biggest one. They're kind of small. I thought we'd catch some, some bigger fish today, but you know, this will do. I got my little bobber set up here, a 
small hook, a couple of weights and a bobber, nothing quite as pure and fun as just grabbing a bobber and a minner and making a cast out there into the abyss. You have a black fly on the lens right now. Can you see that? Let's make it happen. Going in. Oh yeah, that's the kill zone right there. That is not a safe place for a minnow. All right, drag set, looking good. I'm gonna let this rod sit here and I'm gonna toss around the popper. Here we go, ready? It's happening right here. This is where I got bit last time. Maybe he got dumb. Oh yeah, he did get dumb. No! Oh my gosh! How did I lose him? No way, I got bit in the same exact spot. Are you kidding me? Come on, dude. Oh. My bobber just went under. Oh my god, I just pants. Oh my god, I just my pants, dude. I let a fucking risky fart go. Oh my gosh, dude. That that wasn't even a bite either. My lovely wife made chicken tortilla soup earlier today, and it is speed racing right through my digestive system. Oh my gosh. I can't get too distracted throwing the lure because if I do, then I'm gonna miss the opportunity to. Watch my bobber hopefully go down. Oh my god, dude. Look at small the small just bit the bobber. The small just bit the bobber, dude. The small just bit the bobber. I never seen anything like that. The smallmouth just came up and nipped the bobber. Well, things are looking grim for you, boy. I uh I don't know. My own smallmouth don't even like me. I can't catch them on lures, can't catch them on minnows. My bobber has been kind of going up and down a little bit strangely, almost as if like the minnow's getting pressed, but in my opinion, if there was a smallmouth that was holding on to that minnow, that bobber would disappear. So regardless, I think it's gonna be a goal while we're up here in Maine to catch one of these smallmouth. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we gotta figure it out because I wanna show you guys what has been living in my pond for however many years. I think there's really seriously some big fish. That one that I hooked, that was a giant. So I don't know. It seems weird that they're not wanting to bite. Maybe they're just well fed. Like I mentioned, there's so much bait and food in here for them. They, uh, they don't want any of that that junk that I'm offering. But regardless, let's let's get this out of our system. I'm gonna meet up with a buddy named Tyler. He actually lives up here in Maine and we've been going back and forth on Instagram for quite some time. So finally, we got the opportunity to link up and fish. We're gonna to go to one of my little favorite largemouth holes and see if we could sack them because this sucked. This really sucked. Gang, gang, as my boy Theo would say, we're at the pond. It's hard not to tell when a professional angler is at the ramp because the trucks are always fully wrapped. Today, my boy Tyler and I are fishing a secret little hidden gem. You're gonna have to blur out all this, by the way. No one can know about this spot. It's, uh, it's in a pretty populated area just outside of Portland, right outside of Portland. And uh, it's got some pretty good largemouth. And I think there's some small too. I've fished it a couple times. Tyler's never fished it, so. Hopefully catch some bass today. Hopefully get on some bass today. Well guys, this is Tyler. Tyler's a Maine angler. He's, he's making Maine proud, traveling all throughout the United States. Where, you got your tip ten, top 10 at Ufala, is that where it was? Yeah, Ufala, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So there's two, there was two Ufala events. One was in Georgia, and then this one was in Oklahoma. He got six. You don't hear too many Maine anglers making a name for themselves in the, uh, in the BASS game. But he's doing it. Nice. He's got big glides on. We're fishing a big largemouth spot. We're gonna see if we can go crank him. He's never fished here before. We've already caught a couple fish. We're gonna see if we can just crank on some decent LMBs before the storm comes and eat them up. Let's do it, homie. Let's crush him. Oh, there's a decent one. Decent one. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some. Nice post spawners, big heads, little body. Wow, it's not a bad time when you can just launch the boat, drop the trolling motor, and beat the bank with a frog. That's a little two pounder. It looks like he's been, um, it's been loved up on a little yeah. bit. Catch and release right there. <laughs> yeah, good fish. Let's see if we can get some more. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's going down. Oh, he f hates that. Oh, oh, he hates that. Oh. Cause that was sick. That was sick. Oh! <laughs> it is a giant, dude. That is such a good fish. Dude, he freaking choked it. <sighs> Not as big as mine, but we'll take it. <laughs> that is insane. It's a four. 
Damn, that's close to five. That's a good one. It is a good one. By the way, we're in Maine, not Texas yeah, right like, now. This Just a heads up. <laughs> this is a big one here. Dude, he freaking <laughs> hammered. <laughs> that was so sick. Oh my gosh. Nice one, dude. Well, nice there's good bass in here. We, uh, you know, I think people are under the impression like Maine doesn't have good bass fishing. It's a trout place, but this is kind of proof right now. That was insane. The way he reacted to that, he did not like it. Small one. Holy <laughs> shit. I didn't know there was crappie in here. I didn't either. It's a giant crappie. <laughs> On a three quarter ounce jig. <laughs> That's probably one of the bigger main crappie I've seen too. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, big black. It's thick too. Like it's not just paper. I'm gonna have to ice fish this place now. That's They're not. All, I saw a bunch out in the middle if that's what they are. They definitely are. Wow. Thank you. Ah. Well, I'll just leave Tyler to catch the big ones. I'm over here just making sure that I get the little ones for him. It's been a fun day. Now we're ripping some lips. Thank you, dude. Uh, ideally, like five good bites, five good moments. Ooh! That's a good one. That's a good one. Dude, holy sh What the f do you have, dude? Oh, it's a nice one. <laughs> That was so was gonna jump. Dude, that was so <laughs> sick. Oh my goodness, dude. That was like close to four pounder. This kid's an animal. He's eating it up. It's a fun bite too, just leaning back with a jig. <laughs> my line stretched like yours. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that that came out opposed to a 12 incher. Nice job, dude. That's awesome. Oh, fish I them. Get the other one if you can. Oh, I got a little dink fast. Not bad. Yeah, yours is a, is a little bit better than mine, though. Aww. Yours might be a little bit better than mine. Though. He's dancing. Watch your feet. <laughs> Just put a hook in my hand. <laughs> that is a perfect example of why you, people probably shouldn't fish with me because stupid that happens all the time. Like, I just hooked myself in the hand just now. Like yeah, it went in and went out real quick, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, but we're good. We're, we're, we're cooling. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> that was cool. Thanks. That's dope. You got the you got to pick which one. That was, I was so doing sick. That on Scudic as much as I could. Really? So bringing them in and then recasting. Yeah, trying to get the big one out of the group. That's lit. Good average in here for sure. Yeah, this is like the smallest one. So yeah. Far, oh yeah. Like really small ones. Yeah, oh well, other than the ones I've been catching. Smallest one for you, dog. Ooh, biggin. 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 Ah, thought I was on grass again, dude. I've been getting so much freaking vegetation catching up them. Absolute dog. Donkasaurus Rex. Nice. Main Ellen busy. Kiss him. Spank him. Send him back. Go get another one. Grown. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh my god. Dude. Oh my god. Dude. That's a giant. It's a giant. To end the day. Okay, I'm gonna grab her for you. That's a giant, dude. Holy sh Holy sh Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Got her. Dude. That might be six. Maybe. That might be six bounds. Literally said, let's leave in five minutes. And he pulls some of that. Wow. You got a scale on the boat? Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah, dude, let's measure that. Oh, oh. all tension. That was literally all tension. Dude, that is definitely the biggest main bass I've ever seen in person. And it just so happens to be the first time I'm fishing with Tyler. 
Dude, you're, if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. You are legit. That is insane. <laughs> that was insane. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wow. That is a main stuff. You guys understand, like in the state of Maine, especially where we're at, which is southern Maine, wink, wink. Um, <laughs> that is, uh, that's a very big fish. That's equivalent of like probably a Texas 10. Texas eight, I'd say at least a Texas nine. Probably nine. Yeah, probably so nine. A yeah, a 10 would be a six, you know. That's a good fish though. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Woo, big one. Oh my gosh, dude. That is, you're on fire. 20 something, well over 20 pounds. You wanna grab this one too? <laughs> no, no. Oh yeah, I'll grab him, yeah. I think at the, I think the rod, I'm like, what? Oh yeah, that's a giant dude, holy. Oh my God, <laughs> this day has been insane. I'm over here like, I'm doing exactly what you're doing. Can't get, oh my gosh, dude, that's amazing. Hey man, thank you. Let's do it again and hey, good luck on the tour. I I'm, I'm sending you some good juju on the St. Lawrence. I can send you a spot too, where you don't want to drive over because it ate my lower unit last year. So I'll just, I'll send you that out. That's the only intel I have on the Lawrence. But that, yeah, no, I, other than that, it's like, for me, I just got lucky every day and caught one five pounder and that was it. So you'll, you'll probably need at least five of those yeah. every day. <laughs> I'll try. But anyway, man, have a good one. Thanks for taking this fishing. <sighs> Cheers, wieners. Back at Camp Claw. The weather is beautiful. Cheers to a beautiful day up here in Maine. Yet another eventful one. Got to check out the pond. Pond's looking pretty good. Still cannot catch a freaking bass out of the pond, but maybe one day I'll succeed. We did manage to have a bit of fishing fun though with my boy Tyler. Great meeting him finally and linking up with him in person. Dude's an absolute hammer stick. Dude's an absolute sledge hammer. Should call him the Mjolnir. He's freaking a weapon at it, but that was also fun too. And it was also fun just hanging out with you guys from another video up here in the great north woods of Maine. Kicking it, having fun, and now enjoying a couple beverages out here in camp as the day winds down. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.